Next up is Patrick Holmes. Patrick is a senior advisor to the Under Secretary for Natural Resources and Environment at the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the United States Forest Service. Uh, Patrick will discuss climate change, energy, and policy issues related to forest management and the development and use of forest products. Well, thanks, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you this evening. Um, I'm going to talk to you in a moment here about what's going on here, which happened uh, this past Thursday here in New York with Secretary Vilsack. Um, but before I do, I, I just want to uh, help folks understand a little bit about what USDA is doing uh, in the land sector to support solutions to climate change, and in particular, uh, how we came to support a lot of this work in, in building with wood. Um, as many of you know, Secretary Vilsack uh, is uniquely focused on uh, creating a new pathway to rural economic prosperity in the U.S. And, uh, that, you know, his approach has always been focused on building upon some of our traditional strengths uh, in uh, livestock and production, agriculture, and things of that nature, but, but also working in new areas, in local and regional food systems, and opportunities coming from our natural resources and our forests, and opportunities in the emerging bioeconomy as well. And when he tells a story about uh, where these opportunities are coming from, he looks back at what happened in agriculture. And many of you may know that in the 80s and 90s, we had a very turbulent period in American agriculture, uh, in large part because we had a two-dimension agriculture. We were focused on livestock and crop production, and that was basically it. Uh, well, agriculture decided to change. We decided to embrace innovation. Uh, we started to diversify and look at new opportunities in the energy sector and uh, local and regional f food systems and specialty crop markets. And today we enjoy record exports. Um, uh, we enjoy a very growing uh, uh, and promising agricultural economy. And I think what's exciting is we're starting to see the same thing happen uh, when we look at the wood products sector. Uh, the Great Recession was a, a, took a big uh, impact on the wood products industry, industries across the U.S., in part because we were uh, uniquely focused on uh, the residential uh, home sector. And uh, when we saw the decline in home sales, we lost about 1,000 mills in this country. We lost about $9 billion in, in wage income, mostly in rural places. And what we're seeing now is a focus on innovation again, and a focus on uh, diversifying uh, to new market segments and new opportunities in the commercial space and in uh, mid and high rise construction and and other technologies like nanotechnology and, and other areas where wood products can be useful. Um, all of this, I think, uh, is important as we think about uh, the role of the land sector in climate change, in part because our farmers, our foresters, our ranch landowners have a remarkable track record of facing adversity in the past when uh, it comes uh, to economic challenges and have always responded with innovation, have always responded with resilience, and at USDA, we think climate change is going to be no different. And I think the story that we're hearing today around uh, the opportunities with building with wood is, is one of the best examples of that. Uh, so in, in April, Secretary Vilsack uh, outlined uh, the role that uh, our farms, our forests, and our ranches are going to play to support uh, the president's uh, climate commitment of reducing emissions uh, 26 to 20, 28 percent over 2005 levels. Um, he called it the building blocks for climate smart agriculture and forestry, and collectively they rely upon the various capacities at USDA, our conservation programs, our farm bill programs, our programs through the Forest Service, uh, to help find opportunities where we can reduce carbon emissions and increase carbon storage in our forests, while also providing other economic and environmental benefits and helping build resiliency for operations and producers and industries across the country. So, uh, in total, we came up with uh, 10 building blocks that are going to result in 120 million metric tons of emissions reductions in carbon storage. And uh, many of those are focused on the forest sector and in opportunities around storing, uh, improving uh, markets for wood products, around protecting private forest lands, around urban forests, and uh, forest restoration uh, in response to some of the risks that we're facing. Um, as Frank alluded to earlier, uh, you know, our forests play an incredibly important role in this country in our climate solution. There are 14 percent of our emissions uh, annually that are offset by forests. That's half the electric power sector. Uh, so it's a big deal maintaining that capacity over time of our forests to offset 
uh, emissions. And when we look out into the future, we expect that, that buffering capacity of the nation's forests to potentially decline in response to a number of factors. Certainly development pressures, certainly pressures of uh, climate-related insect disease, wildfire, um, but also uh, you know, an aging forest stock that in many cases uh, we need additional forest management. Uh, so uh, incredibly important to this whole picture is having strong markets for forest products. And those strong markets in turn keep uh, forest land forested, keep uh, forest land and working ownership, help us avoid development. Uh, but those strong markets can also be incredibly valuable to us on our federal lands as well and helping to do some of the forest management that um, Professor Oliver talked about in terms of reducing wildfire risk and, and dealing with some of the insect and disease issues that we're faced with across the nation's forests. So for all these reasons, we got into the building with wood business. And a little over a year ago, uh, March, Secretary Vilsack convened uh, the first ever White House meeting on this topic called Building with Wood, Jobs in the Environment, where we brought together members of the architecture and design and engineering community, members of forest industry and uh, conservation organizations, uh, members of the federal sustainability uh, uh, officers from different federal agencies and architects and engineers from, from their outfits. And we looked at all the different opportunities that there were with building with wood. Uh, at that event, we, we also announced a uh, million dollars in support for Woodworks. Uh, we've since done an, another million dollars in support, and I'll let Bill speak more to what Woodworks does, but uh, suffice to say, from our perspective, incredibly valuable organization and the outreach and education that they do for the architect and engineering community around uh, wood solutions. Uh, at that event, we also announced uh, our plans for the U.S. Tallwood Building Prize Competition, uh, which ultimately became a $3 million prize competition launched in partnership with the Softwood Lumber Board and the Binational Softwood Lumber Council. And uh, I'll share a little bit uh, from the winners of the competition that were announced last Thursday in a moment. Uh, we're also moving forward doing quite a bit of work around uh, research in this space, and uh, I want to talk to that in a moment as well. Why don't we go ahead and uh, jump to the next slide. So one of our winners, and uh, we're lucky enough to have a number of uh, folks here in the room today uh, who are on the development team, is here in New York City, and it's uh, from 475 West 18th Street, uh, right across the street from where we were on the High Line uh, for the announcement last week. Uh, this will be an approximately 10-story building, um, uh, condominium building. Uh, the development firm uh, is Spiritos Properties, and we're, we're lucky enough to have Jeff Spiritos here with us. Jeff, you can raise your hand so folks can find you. Uh, the architecture firm was uh, Shop, and we have uh, Luisa Mendez here from Shop uh, as well. And I see Shanta Tucker in the back from Atelier 10, who is uh, providing a lot of the environmental and consulting support for this project. Uh, through the competition, we're going to provide, uh, through USDA and the Softwood Lumber Board, a million and a half dollars to this project to support some of those incremental testing and research costs that are needed to uh, prove out this technology to the local building code officials um, and uh, help, help meet their needs. We can jump to the next slide. This is a great view of the interior of uh, the planned project there uh, at 475 West 18th Street. Jump to the next. So the other winner of our project was from Portland, Oregon. Uh, and this, is, this project's called Framework. Uh, lots of exciting things happening in Oregon. Actually, Governor Brown uh, just a couple of weeks ago announced plans in Oregon to host, hold a similar competition modeled after the USDA competition to support some incremental costs for buildings uh, in her state. And they also announced uh, a new manufacturer uh, coming online to produce cross-laminated timber panels in the US, uh, the first uh, in DR Johnson, uh, Valerie Johnson, the owner of, of that group. So this project is going to be about a 12-story building located in the Pearl District in Portland. Uh, it's done by uh, Lever Architecture in, pro in coordination with a development firm called Project. Uh, it will house the future headquarters of Beneficial State Bank Corp. Uh, Beneficial State Bank does a lot of work uh, in low-income and underserved communities with affordable banking services, uh, mostly with a, a triple bottom line uh, approach focused on environmental and social uh, good. Uh, this project will also have uh, some workforce housing and some other commercial and retail space as well. Jump to the next slide. Uh, so here are some, some photos of the winning teams. I uh, just want to acknowledge and congratulate uh, the folks from New York who are here. 
uh, in, in being selected as winners. And we're very excited about uh, each of these projects showcasing uh, the architectural potential as well as uh, the safety and, and opportunity of building with wood here in the U.S. Uh, I mentioned that we're doing a lot of work moving forward in the research space. Uh, we're going to have a research symposium at the USDA Forest Products Lab focused on mass timber this fall, where we're going to be bringing together international experts, uh, experts from across the federal government, uh, members from engineering firms in the private sector and others, uh, all to support um, uh, a coordinated research agenda, uh, helping to identify what the, the needs are around uh, engineering solutions and other uh, fire, seismic, uh, acoustic concerns that often can be challenging when, when trying to get these projects approved under our current code. Um, so that'll be really valuable and we're going to put together a, a research uh, database that can support a lot of that work moving forward. We're also going to be as part of National Forest Products Week, uh, which happens every year. This year it'll be October 19th. Uh, conducting a number of events and making a series of announcements. In particular, we're going to put out our next round of Wood Innovations Grants, uh, which last year we funded about $8 million in support uh, to support and foster wood innovations. Uh, everything from state wood implementation teams doing marketing and promotion to innovative research and the types of uh, forest health solutions that Professor Oliver talked about uh, at Oregon State University, for instance, where uh, we're looking into ways in which we can take the, the hazardous fuel material, the low-grade material that's often a problem for our forest fires in the West, and use them in the core of uh, CLT panels where uh, the imperfections and, and various knots and other materials can actually add strength to those panels uh, and, and per perhaps perform better and create a market that can support uh, reducing fire risks on our forests. So lots of excitement uh, from USDA's perspective. We're delighted to have uh, such wonderful partners here, and uh, thanks for including us today. Great.